Hi, Eric Archer from TI here. And today we're gonna to learn about Earth. What is Earth? To help us do that, we're working with the Hip Hop MD, uh, who's gonna walk us through what is Earth. Uh, Hip Hop MD, can you, can you uh, get us started here? Yes, yes. Hi, Eric, how's it going? Um, <laughs> hope everybody can hear me fine. Um, glad to be here presenting this uh, wonderful topic. Um, lots to dive into. Uh, what is Earth is definitely a big topic, uh, but I think uh, everybody will find some interest in getting a little more insight uh, about this wonderful globe that we all live on. <laughs> so um, I'll go ahead and take it from here. Unless you had anything else for me, Eric? No, that's it. We're, uh, we're excited to get started. Okay, awesome, awesome. Well, hello everybody, I am the Hip Hop MD. Today we are going to be diving into the topic of what is Earth? And I know that seems like a wide range topic. Um, a lot of times we always think that we know what Earth is, this wonderful planet that we all live on with all sorts of different continents and oceans and beaches and horizons that we all enjoy and that we all take gratitude and privilege in being on board. Uh, but I wanna go inside and do a little more insights and kind of give a little breakdown more on the astronomical level about what is Earth. Um, and I think in order to really understand what Earth is, we have to understand what Earth is not. And so I'm going to break down a little bit about our solar system, um, a little bit about our sun, a little bit of fun facts about some of the other planets that exist in our solar system. And that's going to take us on a nice wide around journey going back to understanding Earth. And so uh, I'm going to share my screen here with you guys and go through this wonderful presentation that I've piece together for you and hopefully this will give you guys some great insights about our beautiful blue planet as it's called and boom here we go so we are jumping on the topic what is earth now that seems like a very convoluted topic and we all think that we know what earth is right but it's pretty amazing right because at one point we never knew what earth looked like we didn't know that it was this round spherical globe until about 50 years ago when we made our first uh, lunar landing and we're able to look back at Earth and be able to see how this wonderful planet that we live on looks like exactly. And so I want to touch a little bit about what makes Earth special, but I think to really understand what makes Earth special, we have to understand how it is compared to some of the other planets that are out there, and also specifically our sun and how all these different elements interact with one another. So Earth is the most dense planet in our solar system. And if you just have a look at the geology, uh, physiology of Earth, we can understand why. Uh, Earth is 70% water. So we have water that covers the majority of Earth and we have large land masses on Earth. All this combined makes Earth an incredibly dense planet. But also because of its internal core, we have a nickel iron core within our planet uh, that creates a strong magnetic field. And all that metal at the center of our planet gives it incredibly high density. So we're gonna dive into a little bit here on the details of Earth and have a little better understanding about the components of Earth and what exactly of those components make Earth unique. So we're gonna talk a little bit about Earth's core, the water on Earth, uh, the land and geography on Earth. And we've mentioned this about atmosphere on other planets, but Earth has a very unique atmosphere that really dictates a lot of factors about it that make it special for us. So in order to really understand the dynamic of Earth and how Earth's cores are created, I think it's really great to understand exactly how Earth was formed. So there's a, the, there's a hypothesis that we go by that's called the nebular hypothesis. And this has been the most agreed upon hypothesis about the creation of our solar system. So at one point we have all sorts of gas and dust floating around our universe, the our universe. And this is what created the formation of the stars and planets. This occurred when a rotating nebula went through a gravitational collapse. So all this dust and particles that were floating around violently within this space in the universe all completely collapsed within itself. And these pockets of dust and gas gathered to dense regions and this increased pressure heated them up. And so once that heat, you know, once that heat, intense heat created, that is what started our first formation within our solar system, which is our sun. All this material in the center formed into the sun and eventually formed into other our terrestrial planets and our gas giant planets around us. So I think it's really interesting to understand exactly how these planets come together because this really gives us a better understanding about Earth's core specifically. So we take a look at, if we actually take a sectional breakdown of Earth, we see some very, very unique elements that really make up Earth and the geography of Earth and how all these different elements interact with each other. So 
Earth's inner core is composed mostly of iron in solid form. And this, like I said, is due to the intense pressure. So once our planets were created and all this gravitational forces started to pull all these elements together, this, this extreme pressure created this nice metal core, which is mostly composed of iron at the center of our Earth. And it's pretty much in solid form with an incredibly high temperature, 9,392 degrees Fahrenheit. And so when we go past the inner core, we have our outer core. Now, the outer core is really what dictates a lot of elements about Earth. So we have our inner core, which is mostly made of iron. Our outer core is a combination of mostly iron and nickel and some other elements as well, too. But the majority of it is liquid iron and nickel. Okay, so we're going to now dive into a little bit more about Earth's core. So we already talked about uh, the inner core and the outer core. Uh, the next thing that really makes up Earth is the lower and upper mantle. Um, this section is the thickest portion of our Earth, about 1,800 miles thick. And we all know about earthquakes and volcanic activity on Earth. This is all dictated by this portion of Earth, the lower and the upper mantle. Now, this area is very malleable, right? There's movement going on in, these, in this section. And we know this because of the geological activity that's happening with mountains and volcanoes and things like geysers and hot springs, elements that pop up. From the, enter, uh, from the center of our Earth, uh, which is makes up this portion of our lower and our upper mantle. Now, this is comprises of 84% of Earth's total volume and has a very, very unique interaction with the next element of Earth, which is our crust. This is the area that we all walk on, the all visible areas that we see in mountain ranges and canyons and valleys. This is Earth's crust. And it's ironic because it's actually the thinnest layer of Earth. It seems vast and it seems intense because this is the area that we see. We all know, you know, from our comparison of Earth to other planets, how large Earth truly is. And so this is the thinnest layer of our planet Earth. And this area was formed as molten material was rising from the mantle. So as all these fluids and all these malleable components of iron and all these other metals within our mantle of Earth, as they're all moving around and coming out of the Earth and getting towards our atmosphere, it goes through this process of heating and cooling over time. And this is what makes Earth really, really unique compared to a lot of the other planets that we see. We know Mars has rocky formation as well, too, but it doesn't have the water that we have on Earth. And so the, comp the composition of water and also this molten material that's con constantly heating and cooling and forming mountains and forming mountain ranges is really what makes our Earth unique because now we have a ability to be able to dictate and see the shifting of our environment over time. So we know that Earth looked completely different at one point in time. We've all seen the, the pictures of uh, Pangea, which is the component of all of our continents, continents that we have now that are all spread apart our wonderful planet. At one time, we're all combined together. North America, South America, Africa, Europe, Australia, Asia, we're all one large piece of rock. But due to this molten activity that's taking place in our lower and upper mantle and all this tectonic activity that's happening, all this movable elements is why we call it a malleable portion of our Earth is moving and heating and cooling and breaking apart. So these tectonic plates over time, over millions and millions of years, reshape our Earth. So Earth looks completely different than it looked once before. And another million, 10 million, 500 million years from now, this formation is gonna look completely different again because it's constantly moving. Every planet that we live on, whether you're on North America, South America, is constantly shifting, not at a rate that we can see, not at a rate that we'll see in our lifetime, but over time, over millions of years, due to this movement within our lower and upper mantle, how it affects the crust really affects how our geography is on Earth. So we talked about water being an important portion of the makeup of Earth. And it's very, very unique because this water actually has an interaction with the crust that we see on Earth. So we all know our vast oceans and these deep oceans, but we have so many different elements. We have streams, we have lakes, we have river systems, right? And a combination of these malleable portions of our lower and upper mantle really affects how these water systems move and interact. So we have canyons that are formed. Canyons are formed because at one time there was large amounts of water that were moving through it. So if you think about millions and millions of years, these forces of water rushing through these areas of land really help further dictate the shape. So not only do we have all this malleable portions and all this plasma and all this heat and gas and molten plasma rock that's underneath our earth moving and shifting and convecting, but we also have this movement of water that's on the surface also that is reshaping our earth. 
So water is very unique. And this is one thing that we always look about when we talk about habitable planets. We go on a search and try to see planets in our solar system or moons in our solar system that we could possibly live on because we know water is a source of life. But somehow water had to arrive here. We know it had to arrive here because it's something that we don't see on many other planets. And one of the most uh, important theories that we've seen is that a uh, possible comet or a large asteroid at one time may have made impact with Earth, which is what created our water systems, what created our oceans, uh, the ice and the ice crystals and the water elements that were brought from that comet or from a possible other planet and impacted with Earth over time melted. And as it cooled, now this created our vast oceans. And so that's how we believe the majority of our water arrived here on Earth. And water is so unique, as I said, it's the key element to everything that we need to be able to survive on life. We all need water to drink. Plants and animals need water in order to survive. So this is one of the most unique elements about Earth. And we're going to go a little bit later, deeper in when we talk more about our atmosphere and energy on Earth, how water has a true impact on our entire planet. So we move on from water and we talk about our land and geography. And I mentioned this earlier a little bit. We talked about mountains and mountain ranges and canyons. I was recently on a trip to Utah and I was able to see so many of the vast canyons in the Zion National Park area. This is very unique because this is our geological makeup of Earth. These are all dictated by the movement of water over millions and millions of years. When water is standing still, it doesn't seem like it has an impact. We see rivers and we see streams maneuvering through these different vast landscapes. But we know over time, as that movement of water continues, this all carves pathways and carves different layouts and looks of our geography. So we have uh, the geographical study of our planet, which is understanding the human and land interactions. So when we talk about uh, geography, that's really the interactions within everything because as humans, we interact with our planets. And so you have to know a combination about how our planet was formed, how our planet shaped, and the different environments that exist in our planets, whether it be deserts, whether it be rainforests, um, whether it be ocean shores or rivers or marshes, all of these unique elements really dictate how our geographical makeup of our Earth is. And so we have uh, geographers that really analyze the human interactions within these elements uh, within ourselves and how we survive on uh, this rocky planet. And then we dive into a little bit more about the geology. So we have geologists that really understand Earth's composition, how it changed over time. So we know that at, at one point, the rocky formations on Earth do not look like it did, does now. At one point, they're all combined together. Geologists have a good understanding of this because we're able to look at the depths of our Earth. We're able to dive a little bit close, deeper into our crust, uh, into our upper mantle, and be able to see how Earth has shifted and changed over time, how all those different elements and rock formations have adjusted because we were able to take core sections to do core analysis of our Earth to be able to see how it shifted over time because as Earth, as all the molten material on our crust that's at the surface, continues to go down lower from convection and from uh, releases from volcanic activity. All these other elements now come down to earth and other elements come on top of them. So geologists are able to study how all those different compositions over time have shaped our earth. So we've been from that, we've been able to know how old our earth is. We've tracked it at 4.6 billion years old. So you think about all that time, how much time has dictated the, the changes on earth. We know the history of our earth because we're able to look at rock analysis and plate tectonics in our earth, which involves the formation of our earth's landscapes. So by analyzing all those elements, we're able to have a good understanding exactly about how earth was made up and all the elements that do make up earth from all our vast landscapes from from deserts and, uh, and water systems uh, to mountains and canyons. And then we dive a little bit into our atmosphere. And we've talked a little bit about habitable zones. We see planets like us and Mars that we do a lot of research on because we consider these within the habitable zone. And not only is it because of the close proximity to the sun that we look out for, but we also look out for atmosphere because the uh, sun puts out things that are called solar radiation which is very harmful to life as we know it currently. And that solar radiation makes it difficult for life to exist. So we need something that actually protects us from that solar radiation. And that is what the atmosphere does for us on Earth. But just like we have our inner core and our outer core and our lower and upper mantle and the crust of Earth, our atmosphere also has various layers. And each layer has very, very unique elements that really make up how Earth is shaped and make up how we're able to interact with us here on Earth. 
So Earth's atmosphere instead is a source of our protection from solar rays and helps to regulate temperature. So we talked about, uh, we talked about uh, Venus being the hottest uh, planet, not because it was closest to the sun, but because it have, has a vast and intense uh, atmosphere. And that atmosphere is what regulates the temperature on Earth. So we see all the temperature variances that we have here on Earth from wintertime to the summertime. That is all regulated by things that are going on within our atmosphere. Now, the density of air molecules decreases with altitude. We know this every, every time you've been on an airplane or as we've seen astronauts go into space. As we pass through these different layers of our atmosphere, things cool. So we know, Earth is, so we know the universe is cold, our solar system is cold, and the atmosphere helps trap all that heat right here within the surface of Earth. But once we start to pass through these different elements of our atmosphere, we now start to get to colder, colder, more dense regions. And our atmosphere is unique, just like how our Earth is made up of iron and nickel and other metal elements. Our atmosphere is also made up of multiple different elements. We have a mixture of nitrogen, which is, composes about 78% of our Earth. Oxygen, which is obviously very important because we all need oxygen to survive. We need oxygen to breathe. We release carbon dioxide and other gases in the air, but oxygen is our prime, prime chemical that we all need in order for life to survive. So that's one thing we also look out for when we're looking for habitable planets. We look at about their close proximity to the sun. We look at their atmosphere. We look at the possibility of water, whether it's trapped in polar ice caps or whether it's liquid water. But we also look out for oxygen because we know oxygen is one of the fundamental principles of life for us to be able to survive on. But there are also multiple other elements in there, argon, carbon dioxide, and other trace elements within our atmosphere as well that make up our entire uh, atmosphere that protects our planet. So we're going to go into a little bit more about this as we go into further topics. But this kind of gives us a breakdown, a great analysis about our Earth, the breakdown of our Earth, the geography, how all these different components really make up Earth. And so that's the end of our slideshow here. But uh, this really sets us up to have a better understanding exactly of how Earth is made up and how does this makeup of Earth and geology, the geological makeup and the atmospherical makeup and our correlation with other planets, all these things dictate and compromise what Earth is. And so once we have a fundamental understanding about our, mat, of, about our inner core, our outer core, our different layers, and how our atmosphere and the environment around us in our universe affects us, this gives us a better understanding of Earth, which leads us into our next topic we'll talk about later, which is exactly how Earth works. So I hope this was helpful in giving you a little better understanding, a breakdown about the dynamics that make up this wonderful blue planet that we're on. And I'm very interested to see where this takes us next, Eric. Andrew, that was great. Thank you so much, uh, Hip Hop MD, on, on going over uh, the elements of Earth. I really liked how you, you went through the, the different layers of uh, what the planet's made of, um, the water, the atmosphere, uh, the whole nine yards. So, you know, it's the perfect for supporting life, obviously, and, um, you know, and, and then I know on some of those other planets that that, that would not be possible, at least as life exists today. Uh, so, yep. uh, so great job, and thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Thank you. That was fun.